Aloha everyone, Ronnie Landis here, and I just felt really compelled to share a quick message with you guys. I had these downloading or uploading of insights, and I've been going through a lot of twists and turns in my life, and I know all of us have been with the lunar cycles and our inner cycles, and everything is coming up to the surface, right? All the submerged, embedded material is coming up to the surface and we're seeing it all over the world we're seeing it in every faction of politics of business of marketing of the environmental catastrophes that have occurred and also the environmental miracles that are birthing out of the whole situation we see it in human relations relationships business relationships our own self relationship that we have with ourself um, our relationship that we have with the divine with God or however you want to uh, frame that, that deep interconnectivity to everything around us in something that is uh, somehow governing it in some way. So the insight that I arrived at just actually a couple minutes ago, and that's why I had to jump on here while the energy is fresh, is the greatest neurosis that I have been observing for years. I mean, it is a deep one. It's a deep one, and I see it as the root that bears all the spoiled fruit in everybody's lives, in my life, in your life, in all everybody's life out there. It's the thing that taints the miracle in our life. It's the thing that essentially, from an, an efficiency or an effective productivity point of view, it doesn't breed good results. It causes us to be in an inner civil war, and we're constantly teetering between poverty consciousness and prosperity consciousness. And basically what it is, is the very thing that I've been trying to get a handle on when I, when I talk about the art and science of detoxification and cleansing and, and inner purification and, and transmuting the lead, if you will, into the gold, transmuting our thought forms from poverty into prosperity and being solution orientated and actually the thing that the type of energy that inhibits us from making right action happen or making adjustments in our life, taking immediate right action, doing the things we know and actually doing them with a smile on our face, right? There's something that inhibits us at a core psychosomatic body emotion level. And this is, this is it from my perspective. It's an addiction to seriousness. People are too addicted to being serious. I, I really, this, I, again, I've been looking at this for so many years and doing my own inner evolution work to figure out what's that thing inside of me that keeps holding me back. And I really was gifted with this insight from my friend David Wolf, and he really kind of invoked that quality out of me. And again, it's an addiction to being serious. It's an addiction to conclusive thinking, meaning that we are trying to arrive at the conclusion of everything. We're trying to categorize everything. We're trying to define everything in this finite box, right? Another way of saying that is Lysenkoism. Lysenkoism is a very interesting term. Again, my friend David Wolf, in a, in a room that we were in a couple months ago in Berkeley, California, for two hours talking about all kinds of stuff, he brings up this idea of Lysenkoism and basically made very simple, that is like a scientific definition, if you will, or in this case, I'll kind of think of it as like a clinical definition, to describe a thought form where somebody is trying to arrive at a pre-decided um, endpoint a pre-concluded perspective or conclusion. Let me unpack this just a little bit further. I think this, the, putting the finger on this, or putting my, my finger on the button right here is just really important. Um, if not for you, for me, for sure. Because I've been trying to figure this thing out for years, and finally that term was put in front of me. Lysenkoism. It's like, it's like almost trying to adopt a scientific method without being scientific about the method or about the results that you're getting. It's a bias that we have. So when we have a bias, we have a preference of how we want to see something or how we want to label something, we 
call it scientific, but we're not actually practicing non-biased objective science in the sense that we are just we're on a journey. We are just experimenting with something and whatever result we get, that's the result. We don't have to try to package it or fit it into our preference. We're looking to see what the feedback from life is and get a result and then move forward from there without a preconceived bias for how this thing has to end up. We see that in the pharmaceutical companies and all their research and studies and, and corporate funded studies and the, the vaccines and the whole thing. Like it's so obvious. I, I can't even go into it right now. I want to try to stay on point here. Because ultimately, it's a consciousness problem that we have. We're trying to box our reality in to our comfort zone. We're unable to be comfortable in uncomfortable circumstances. So we try to match our reality up with something that is preferable to our comfort zone. That's essentially the idea, right? So one of the things that I see with a lot of people on Facebook, social media, people that now are responding to my work because my voice is getting a little bigger, my work is getting out to more channels, and 99% of it is super positive feedback, but every once in a while there will be somebody that wants to poke holes or whatever, and that's totally fine. But I notice the attitude in which some people do it, and it's not just me, it's all over the internet when you read the comments of stuff, and... It appears to me that people are taking things way too seriously. They're very aggressive about it. They're, they're, it's almost like a survival instinct. They're trying to protect some form of information or a perspective they have on something instead of actually allowing new perspectives and new information to influence the mosaic of your worldview. Just because you have an idea about something or you have information to back up a fragment of that perspective that you have, it doesn't mean that that's the final answer. It doesn't mean that that's all there is and, and life is, is summed up into this little box or nutrition is summed up into this little box and label or this little detox protocol that works for some people, but other people that are in certain circumstances and are unique, it won't work in the same way. And I see this all over the health world. And so my role in all this as a public orator and someone who is very ambitious about getting his message out to the world, my challenge up to this point of actually stepping up fully into that role and letting go of some of the discomforting habits that I might have that maybe on some level are holding me back just because I don't feel totally ready to get out onto the biggest stages that I'm absolutely skilled at, that I can absolutely rock a stage of 200, 1,000 people. In fact, the bigger the stage, the more people in the audience, the better I come alive. But anyways, circle back to the point. So the point of me sharing that little tidbit is to say that I have been slightly apprehensive about really stepping fully out there simply because I think differently. My mind is not boxed into this little label. Even though I'm a raw living food enthusiast, advocate, raw foodie, I'm a super foodist, I'm an herbalist, I'm a detoxification um, strategist, I'm a hormone specialist, whatever these little terms that we want to use to, to box ourselves into one operation of thinking, I can't do it. So I, I find myself hopscotching be, behind or between all kinds of different uh, conversations and bodies of information because on somewhere in my consciousness, I'm piecing together the constellation of diametrically opposed ideas and piecing them in to where they fit. And it's not an easy process. It's, it's definitely an enduring process, and it's one that I may not be ready to fully embody for another five years. I don't know. But the point, again, is that I don't, I don't see it valuable for any of us in the new age that we're living in, in the new energetic field that is emanating from the, the Schumann resonance and the world that we live in and the conscious adjustments, and the energetic adjustments that are going on in our planet. We have to think differently. 
our generations before us were more specialized in specific areas, right? But we come into the world now with the internet and we actually can take the best of the best, all the information that's been zeroed in on, all the protocols, everything that's been laid out, we can just take that and then start piecing all the compartmentalized elements into their right fitting organization, right? Now, that was a little bit of a tangent on that, but again, bringing it back to the root, the only way that I'm able to think like that is that I have to open my mind. I can't be psychosclerotic. Psychosclerotic is similar to atherosclerotic, a hardening and a tightening and a compression of the blood vessels and capillaries. It's an actual physical hardening. Well, there's psychosclerosis where your physical brain tissue starts to calcify or your pineal gland calcifies. And your actual mode of operation, meaning your ability to think about many different things and hold different ideas in the same space, left and right, at the same point in time, that starts to calcify and harden and brittle up and starts to degenerate over time. And maybe that's the point I'm making, actually, is that we want to get out of psychosclerotic thought patterns. Things that are keeping your mind bound up and tight and fastened in, chased in, chastened in very tightly, and that actually keeps people wound up and tight. And you see this when people are prophetizing and fanatically, like, uh, unloading all this information or all these perspectives, these one-way perspectives, my way or the highway kind of thing, it's because they're wound up too tight and they're too serious. They're, they're too serious. They have an addiction to seriousness. And see, it's interesting because I am every bit as serious, maybe more serious than them, because I'm serious enough to open up my own perception to see what all the different layers of challenges are in the world we face, because I'm very serious about it. But at the same time, I can seriously be having a good time with the whole process. I can, ser- I can be serious and have a big smile on my face at the same time, and be just as lasered in, just as ambitious, just as, you know, um, activist, you know, uh, in the same way that anybody else can. But it's the, it's the way that I go about it. It's the way that you go about it. It's the way that any of us go about it is what's going to actually allow us to be happy in the process, right? Woo, that was a lot. That was a lot. Um, I don't even know. Look, you know, you, we'll watch the video. I don't even know all the little little checkpoints I hit, but I just really felt like I needed to get on here. Maybe it was just for me to be able to vent in a articulate enough way and try to wrap it into some kind of valuable message for all of you. But this was very important for me to even just say this and, and talk to you and interact with all of you and, and like real people on a virtual world. And uh, yeah, I mean. Leave your comments below if this sparked a chord for you. I really, again, the thing to take away from this is the idea of Lysenkoism. Take that with you. Psychosclerosis, take that one with you too. An addiction to seriousness, as my friend David Wolf often will talk about, take that one with you too. Those are three things you can take with you out of this little chat we just had because these are three things that are imperative for performing at your best in the new age. As the economy is shifting, as marketing tactics are shifting and becoming more transparent based, as teaching is actually being more of a marketing strategy than just you know, promoting some product and, you know, seven benefits that are probably made up anyways, like all that, right? The veil, the veil is coming up and the real you is coming to the center and it's, it has to show up, right? So transparency, honesty, and enthusiasm. And those are things that come from within. And if you can master those qualities and you can allow the radical positivity in your life, to overwhelm the negativity in your life, the perceived negativity, then you're good. And that's and then you don't you're no longer bound up to an addictive pattern to being overly serious because some things don't require you to be serious. Some things require you to be relaxed. 
and chilled out and um, retrospective, right? Having a full perspective and being able to entertain all kinds of ideas as they come to you, right? That's the basic idea. Being in a curious state opposed to being in a conclusive state, thinking that you have all the answers and, and your way is the highway and all that stuff we see all over the world pretty much every single day. Thank you so much for taking the time to hear me out, and it has been a pleasure. And I will tune in with you guys next time. Ronnie Landis, signing out. Aloha.